presented by the United States Air Forces in Europe. I am the Whistler, and I know many things before I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes. I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now, the Whistler's strange story, Death Claim. The cantina in Panama City was crowded, laugh-filled. And the two men in the corner booth were contributing their share to both the laughter and the conversation. They were an interesting pair. The older, stouter man looking very much like a retired business executive on a spree. The younger, leaner one easily attracting the eyes of the few female patrons in the establishment. His name was Dick Adams. And at the moment, he owned little else in the world but his name. His companion, however gave the impression of a man used to having money and equally used to spending it. He's a source of wonder to you, isn't he, Vic? This kidding, plump little gent and has been for the past week. He turns away every subtle effort on your part to learn the source of his money. Curly, Curly, another pair here. Uh, No, really, I had enough, Harvey. I could use a little fresh air. Fresh air. (laughs) You kill me, boy, fresh air. (laughs) When there's so many good drinks in the world and so many wonderful places like... What's the matter? Harvey, what is it? What's wrong? I wonder, is there a back way out of here, Vic? Oh, sure, there must be, but Harvey, what's your... Uh, Yeah, but... Do you ask me, Look out. You know your drinks. I bring them Here, keep the chains. Drink them yourself. Let's go, Vic. Yeah, right with you, Harvey. Hey, he spotted us. He's following us. Who? Oh, I don't see anyone. Come anybody. on, Vic. This way, Harvey. Down the alley. Wait, Vic. Somebody's coming, all right. Yeah. Oh, what's it all about, Harvey? You go on, see if the way is clear to the street. I'll catch up in a minute. Sure, you can handle it. Go on, Vic. Okay. Harvey. Vic. Harvey, you all right? I told you to wait. Why did you come back here? I got worried about you, Harvey. I wanted to... If... Harvey. Who is he? What did you do to him? <laughs> Who is he? I don't know. What did I do to him? I killed him, Vic. Hey, Harvey, why? Let's get out of here, my boy. You look like you can use a drink now. Me? I can always use one. Come on, Vic. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> Quiet spot, huh? Just fog horns and a bartender that hates the world. You were going to explain, Harvey. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, so I was, so I was. Well, it's quite a story, Vic. Quite a story. I'm listening. That man recognized me, Vic. Look, I don't follow you. I Harvey. mean, he knew he was looking at Harry Crane, a man who's been dead nearly seven years. Look, Harvey. Harry. I... Harry Crane. Harvey Wilson is just something I dreamed of. Oh. Try to go on? Sure, sure, Vic. (laughs) Let's have it all, Harvey. Or should I say Harry? Harry. You see, Victor, almost seven years ago, there was a plane crash, Central America. Everybody lost or presumed to be killed. Among them, a businessman from San Francisco. Who had a lot of his firm's money on him. You. Me, Harry Crane. So, you're a fugitive. Actually, yes. Legally, no. You see, another employee had been dipping into the till rather lightly and had absconded. That's why this businessman, who was presumed to be killed in the plane crash, decided to dip in rather heavily. You mean no one even connected you with the embezzlement? No one. 
So, while I decided it was wise to stay away from the States, I'm not what is legally known as a fugitive from justice. I guess you don't find me so amusing now, eh, Victor? Well, live and let live, I always say. Good. You keep on saying, my boy, and you'll be all right. You see, old Harry knows where there's plenty more. Uh, More? Money, my boy, money. You see... Unbelievable as it may appear, your friend Harry is at the moment uh, financially embarrassed. What? After the way you've been spending this past week, uh-huh. you've taken I to... still have a little, my boy, a small nest egg of a few thousand. However, as you know, I like to live well, spend well. So? So we must invest in a pair of steamer tickets to San Francisco. And we must arrive before October 5th. October 5th. That is the day my dear wife will be the recipient of over $100,000. Your wife will... Yes, dear, sweet Nora, my grieving, impatient widow. (laughs) Oh, I'm beginning to understand. Mm -hmm. You want to go to your wife. No, no, no. I want you to go to her, my boy. Much too risky for me. It's too risky for anybody, Harry. No, we'll get away with it. We'll take $50,000 away from dear sweet Nora and won't raise a hand. $50,000? Your share, $10,000, just for joining me in a boat ride. Meeting Nora, dancing with her, and she's (laughs) quite attractive, Victor. Much younger than me. (laughs) Harry, you're a strange guy. Yeah. (laughs) I just like to live well, just do my best to make life easy for me. Uh, Bartender, another round. A few days later, the two of you are on a freighter bound for San Francisco. On an evening only one week later, with Harvey waiting for you in a small Oakland hotel, You stand in the corridor of a fashionable San Francisco apartment house and press the buzzer of a door marked Nora Crane. Yes, sir? I, uh, I would like to see Mrs. Crane. It's about... Very sorry, sir, but there's a dinner party in progress. Now, look, it's rather urgent. However, would you give her this note? My name is Adams. Victor Adams. Very good, sir. I'll, uh... Wait for an answer. Oh? Very well. Mr. Adams? That's right. You can come in. I'm Nora Crane. Well, I don't want to... We can talk on the terrace. I, uh, I had to excuse myself from my guest. Uh, this way. Now, what's this all about? Where did you get this note? Who wrote it? Who wrote it? (laughs) Oh, come on now, Mrs. Crane. It could be a forgery. And this cigarette could be a cigar, too, only it isn't. Mrs. Crane, I I won't keep you from your guests. It's, well, I'm the last guy in the world that wants anybody to think something's wrong. You're saying that Harry is alive, that he's in San Francisco. I only said he was alive. You know, you don't seem very pleased about it. Frankly, I'm not. Because of the insurance money? Not entirely. Harry Crane is no good. (laughs) He laughs a lot. He doesn't make me laugh, Mr. Adams. However... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Your guess. Well, I'd like to make an appointment, Mrs. Crane. At two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. To see Harry? To hear his voice. I want you to be sure. Because of a business proposition that I have in mind. Business proposition? Mr. Adams, you might as well know. Without the insurance money, I'm in no position Mrs. to... Mrs. Crane, I'm talking about the insurance money. You're going to get it. Over $100,000. I, uh... I don't understand. Oh, you will. But first, I want you to talk to Harry. Then, we'll talk. Just... Nora and Vic. Tomorrow at two. Tomorrow at two. (laughs) 
It had been a terrible shock for the attractive Nora Crane, hadn't it been? When you'd approached her at a dinner party, calmly informed her that her husband, Harry Crane, long believed dead, was actually very much alive. Since in a week's time, she was to collect a check for $100,000 on Harry's insurance. Still, you had softened the blow somehow, explaining that he wouldn't stand in the way, providing that Nora share the money equally with him. Yes, Nora Crane had been quite upset over the news. And since you felt a dinner party was no place to discuss the matter further, you'd made an appointment to call on her again the following afternoon. In here, Mr. Adams, we can talk in the study. All right. Oh, uh, any of the servants around? No, I've given them the day off. Sit down, please. Thanks. Oh, uh, you know, Mrs. Crane, I could use a drink. Oh? Whatever you're having, uh, make mine with soda. Very well. Your drink. Thanks. Now, Mr. Adams. Shall we get to the point? Sure. You've had time to think over our little business proposition? Yes, and I can hardly afford to turn it down, can I? <laughs> of course, I'll have to have proof that Harry is still alive. Oh, you'll get proof. You'll take me to him? Mm -mm. That won't be necessary. What if I should insist? And what if he's still in Central America? Oh, there are planes. Is he in Central America? Mm, he might be. Oh, why all the mystery? Just playing it safe, that's all. What do you mean? Just that Harry is worth more to you dead than alive. I still don't. Ah, don't bother to get up. I'll answer it. Oh. You're expecting a phone call. That's right. Two o'clock. Not uh, Harry. Mm-hmm. Harry. Right on time. He was never so punctual. <laughs> he was never so broke. Hello. Uh, yes, operator. This is Vic Adams. Operator, what are you talking about? This is... Oh, I get it. I'm trying to make it sound like a long-distance call, eh, Vic? All right, <laughs> operator. Smart boy, Vic. You don't miss a trick. Let me talk to the little lady now with him. All right. Where are you? Hello. Hello, doll. How's my girl? Harry. Guess you were sort of surprised to learn I was still among the living, eh? <laughs> That's, that's putting it mildly. How are you, doll? You miss me? Of course. Of course, darling. Missed you too, really. Did you? I'd, I'd love to see you again, Harry. Where are no, you? No, no, I'll take the phone. No, wait, uh, please. Sorry. The lady is convinced, Harry. Be seeing you. Well, Nora, is the deal on? It's on. Good. Well, there's nothing more we can do now except wait until the insurance company pays off. That's next Wednesday, isn't it? Next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. All that time on my hands and absolutely nothing to do. Or perhaps you have a suggestion? I might. Mr. Adams, I really would like to see Harry. Why? Don't tell me the flame still burns. Well, after all, he was... He is my husband. Well, maybe I can arrange it. I'll think about it. In the meantime, uh, how about dinner tonight? I... I have an engagement. Engagements can be broken. That's right. Well. <laughs> I'll see what I can do about it, Mr. Adams. Where have you been? It's three in the morning. Oh, I've been seeing the town with your lovely wife. Had cocktails downtown, dinner at a cozy little spot in North Beach, and then we went for a drive. Oh, charming girl, Nora. Charming. And still as attractive as ever, apparently. Is the deal set? Yes. I set. Good. Sit down. Fix yourself a drink. Now, if you don't mind, Harry, I'll go on to my room and turn in. Okay. Look, Vic. Yeah. Tomorrow I want you to rent a car. We'll take a ride out of town, get a real nice meal somewhere, have a few laughs. I'm sick of staying cooped up in this hotel no, room. No, no, it's too risky, Harry. Someone might recognize you. Besides, I uh, I have a date tomorrow. A date? Nora again? Yeah. No. No, wait a minute. Jealous? Jealous? Ha. So what's eating you? Well, I... Nothing. Nothing, I guess. 
Only watch your step with Nora. Just watch your step. She's dangerous, Vic. You've met women like Nora before, haven't you, Vic? Dangerous, yes. But none quite as charming and attractive as she is. And you find her company exciting, don't you? In the days that follow, you spend more and more time together. The races. Dining at the fashionable hotels. Dancing at the smart clubs. You know something, Vic? You lied to me. That's so, Nora? You told me you weren't a good dancer. Well, maybe I should have said just rusty, huh? <laughs> you didn't spend all your time in the jungles of Central America. No? The rest of the time I was aboard one freighter or another. I couldn't very well dance with the captain. <laughs> <laughs> When did you meet Harry? A few months ago. He saved my life. He pulled me out of Panama Bay. Oh? I was on a small fishing boat at the time. His yacht rammed us. Yacht? My, my. <laughs> but then Harry always liked to live in style. <laughs> I suppose he owned a villa, too. That's right. Beautiful place. Too bad he had to give it up. The yacht, too. He's really broke. Harry. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have heard from him otherwise. But you know, I'm glad it turned out this way. Or I wouldn't have met you. I'm glad it turned out this way, too, Vic. Makes me sort of expensive, though, doesn't it? Maybe. But maybe I think it's worth it. seeing a lot of her lately. Uh -huh, that's right. I've booked up all her spare time. She doesn't seem to mind. You? Maybe. You are jealous. No, but I don't want anything to mess up this little deal, understand? Oh, what could mess it up? A double cross? You and Nora have been getting pretty chummy. I wouldn't like it at all if you two took the dough and beat it. You think I'd pull a stunt like that? I don't think it would occur to you, Vic, but with a dame like Nora around... Well, she might talk you into it. Well, don't worry about me, Harry. I can take care of myself. Well, see that you do, Vic. Just see that you do. He's right, isn't he, Vic? Now that he's mentioned it, you recall some of the things Nora had said to you. The more you think about it, the more certain you are that it's been on her mind all along. That she's been sounding you out. A half hour later, you take a cab and... Drive out to Nora's house. Hi, baby. Sorry I'm a little late. It's all right, darling. Ready? I'm starved. Uh, Vic. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't be angry with me. Promise. <laughs> okay. What's in your mind? I'd like to talk with Harry again. Harry? Oh, now, oh, love, please, why... Please, darling. Even if this has all been a trick, I wouldn't mind. It's just that I'm... Well, I'm curious. Weren't you convinced when you spoke with him on the phone? I thought I was, but the more I think about you it... You want me to take you to him, is that it? That's what you want? No, no, that isn't necessary. Just just call him on the phone again. Okay. Okay. Make you feel any happier to know I'm not trying to pull a fast one. Clay Street Hotel. Let me talk to Harvey Wilson, please. Harvey Wilson? Yeah. He ain't here no more. He... What? Checked out about 15 minutes ago. Don't know where he went. What's the matter, Vic? Oh, uh, uh, Harry's uh, not in right now. You mean he's checked out, hasn't he, Vic? And you don't know where he is. Wait a minute. How did you know? <laughs> you you knew. You knew all along. You've been having me this routine just for laughs. <laughs> That's right, darling. Just for laughs. <laughs> Suddenly you realize what's happened. Yes, Nora has found Harry somehow and they've teamed up. You stand there staring at Nora, laughing at you. And then quickly she steps to the desk and takes a gun out of the drawer. You really took me for a ride, sweetheart. I guess Harry was right. 
You are dangerous. Is that what he said about me, darling? Yeah. Yeah, that's what he said. Here. Take the gun. What? I said take the gun. Uh, now, wait a minute. Vic, I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. I didn't try to find Harry. He called me on the phone. He called you? Yes. He wants me to make a deal with him, leave you out of it. I guess he doesn't trust you. I see. I told him it was all right with me and suggested he leave the hotel right away. I promised to see him tonight, to talk things over. Where? I sent him to a small motel down the peninsula. A nice, quiet little spot, Vic. I had a very special reason. What do you mean? You're going to take this gun, darling, and go down to see Harry tonight. And you're going to kill him. Me? Kill Harry? You've got to. Tomorrow I'll get the check from the insurance company. And we won't have to share it with anyone. A hundred thousand dollars, Vic. Ours. You'll do it, darling. For us. Give me that gun, honey. Nora's plan was simple, wasn't it, Dick? Yes, you had only to kill Harry Crane. Then you and his wife, Nora, could share the insurance money. That's the way she'd planned it all along. She believes you're going through with it. But after leaving her that afternoon, you'd thought the matter over very carefully had finally decided on another course of action. That night, you slip into Harry's room at the quiet little motel and find him stretched out on the bed. Harry. Yeah, I'm awake. I've been expecting you, Vic. Now listen, Harry, I've got to tell you something. Too late, sucker. You walked into a trap. Turn around and get a big surprise. Huh? Oh, Nora. Hello, darling. Uh, careful. I won't hesitate to pull the trigger. You get the picture, Vic, with Triple Cross. She makes a deal with you, one with me, then gets us down here to kill us both. <laughs> That's Nora. I told you she could talk you into anything. But she didn't, Harry. You see, I didn't come down here to kill you. Then why did you come, darling? To let Harry know I told the insurance company about him this afternoon. What? Yes, Harry, I did. After I saw Nora this afternoon, I suddenly woke up, decided to stay on the right side of the fence... And save your life at the same time. That makes us even. You're lying. No, I'm not. I even brought an insurance investigator along with me. Drop the gun, Mrs. Crane. Drop it. <laughs> Sorry, sweetheart. I would have done almost anything for you. Anything except kill. Harry or anyone else. The Whistler. Listen next week when once again the United States Air Forces in Europe present the Whistler. The Whistler has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.